Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, second Delhi podcast of the Delhi League 2.0. And today we're going to be going over the top four, or the only remaining 4-0 teams in the league. And what those teams have to do to get over the hump to actually win it all. When we look at those four teams, we'll see that only one of them is a past champion. Or two of them are past champions. Two of them are, are new teams that have not won a championship yet and three of them are from season one teams so the four teams we're going to be talking about are the chicago dogs the new orleans voodoo the raleigh pythons and the orlando alligators so uh we'll go over how their last seasons ended um we'll start with the chicago dogs so they had their last season end to the new orleans voodoo after blowing a fourth quarter lead um, overall, we'll see how they improve. They got a fullback in Don Fullbuster. They improved the offensive line immensely, getting multiple pieces, and now they can do a rotation in at guard because they have three offensive guards. Um, a lot of development to the team. Obviously, everyone's still 23 or younger, so everyone's still developing. So the team's ever growing. Some former star players they had, like Darius Moreno, is starting to get worse, but players like David Long the third. Are you know seemingly getting over the hump? Manny Herrera is entering into the MVP conversation consistently, and Royce Colley Moore is already evolving as one of the best safeties in the league. The next team we'll cover is the Orlando Alligators, who had their season end uh, in a 10-point playoff loss, I believe, to the New Orleans Voodoo. I think it was 41-31. And their big problem that game was safety. Um, their safeties were not playing up the standard. But uh, they seemingly fixed that at least a bit this year. The addition of Lance Cook, who they just traded for uh, before week three, has been huge. And J.J. Riley's playing a bit better than he did last year. So there's, uh, there's that. But um, they also have Brian Dawkins Jr., who has been, you know, in his limited playing time because he hasn't been starting, has been doing pretty solid. Um, who else? They also had, they traded for Kyrie Nickerson recently. They drafted Poe Pylon, Brian Dawkins Jr., and Carlton Zoom. Oh, and Penny Williams. I'll talk about Penny Williams for a second. This is a huge addition to the team. One of the best offensive tackles uh, already in the league. And offensive line has been a huge need for this team. And he fills that nicely. They also drafted Nick Dennis III, who's a cornerback. But John Robinson Jr. And to close out their draft class, they got Theodore Koble. To add to a pretty already elite group of wide receivers that are all developing into pretty studs before our eyes. Making the MVP campaign for Isaac Lopez seem even more and more possible um ways that this team could struggle though is that i know Kyrie mojit isn't going to be active this season or at least as we said he won't be affected as in his overall boost but he won't be playing you know at a defensive player of the year level anymore if he is you know not active uh trey trotty has seemingly gotten a bit more inactive and those were the two leaders of this orlando alligators team but on the bright side, Kevin Harrison's having a career year and looks to be a strong offensive player of the year candidate through as many weeks or through four weeks. Uh, Bruce Wells stepped up last game, though he had a rough start to the season. And Josh Peters is uh, doing solid as an edge rusher and has definitely been the better of the two when it comes to edge rushing. The next 4-0 team were we we'll take a peek at, or we'll go at the two champions. The first one is the Pythons, the Season 2 champions. What have they done this offseason? Um, well, it's more, it's more so what the, what they did last offseason, or last season. The acquisition of Ricky Martello is still playing pretty key for them. But in the draft, they had, they had an alright draft. Getting Jared Tavis Lopez was huge for this team. Um, they were built on offensive line the first time around, and they seemingly were going to have a, a pretty worse offensive line, a significantly worse offensive line for the first time in their history. But the two tackles of Lopez and Byrne should hold down the fort, 
and that's paved way for Damon Hartsaw to have an MVP season. Uh, as we continue to look, they also got undrafted free agent Dodge Summers as a backup. Um, and he's going to insert himself into the holder role over Damon Mayweather, who obviously had a, a key drop from being the holder last year in the playoffs against the Dawks. And the final team we're going to look at is the New Orleans Voodoo. And this was the champions last year, but they underwent some serious renovations to the teams. That makes this look like a whole new team. I would, you, you can barely consider this being the same team that did win the championship last year because of all the acquisitions. But most of the key players are still there. They still remain. Um, but Ludwin Castellanos was a huge addition to replace Eli Davis III. Definitely freed up a solid amount of cap room. Um, they still got the best kicker in the league. But they uh, made a huge move to trade a lot of picks up to get Santana Roth, the cornerback. That was pretty big. Um, they also got edge rusher Luke Castle. That's uh, that's pretty huge. They traded Julian uh, Quintero. But they got Austin Davis Jr. now in the full-time back role. Which is, I gotta say, I think a pretty good role for him. And then what's the other rookie they got? Um, Kyle Jet, the wide receiver. Seems to be solid so far. Though that the team is not playing him that much because the three receivers that they play the most are just Winslow, Tony Hartley, and Ludwin Castellanos. So we're going to quickly look at what which of these teams I think would be most likely to win it. Um, I would say, you know, the Pythons behind MVP Damon have a really good chance. I mean, all four of these teams have great arguments for why they will win it and have really good rosters. The Alligators have a pretty dynamic all-around team. So I can definitely see them winning it behind their potential MVP quarterback. Um, the Voodoo also have a potential MVP quarterback in Malcolm Land of the Third. Um, while his stats might not reflect it, his rushing numbers are far and away better than everyone else's because he's playing in a doing a lot of read options with Austin Davis Jr., who's also an offensive player of the year candidate. And I would never count out the dogs, you know, they got the best defense in the league, and that's pretty pretty clear. They barely give up any points, and when the offense flows, that team is nearly unbeatable. You're gonna have to do a lot of a lot of things to, to score points on that dog team, and then even if you do that, they got a culmination of weapons on offense that are gonna be hard to stop. So I would say out of, out of all the four teams the most likely, I mean, I can't even say there is a most likely team because they're all pretty, they're all pretty even. But yes, this is the special edition Delhi podcast episode where we reviewed the uh, the four four and zero teams remaining in the league. Um, we'll quickly go over who I think is most likely to to lose. So we have the Voodoo go up against the Sandstorms next week in Arizona. That's gonna be a tough one. But the Sandstorms are off to a rough start to the year, so there's that. Then the Dogs go into Cincinnati, which is another tough one, but the Dogs shouldn't have a problem with that because the Cincinnati Colts are also off to a rough start to the year. The Alligators are going to play at the Pythons, so that's going to be a very interesting one. That's obviously a star game. And that's a week five, so after week five, we know that we're going to have at least one of those undefeated teams losing. Uh, week 6, we see the Voodoo play at home against the Gyre Falcons. Um, we see the Alligators play at home against the Canines. And we see the Pythons go into Chicago. So for the time being, we're, uh, I'll, make, I'll make some predictions. I'll predict that the Pythons win at home against the Alligators and the Dogs win at home against the Pythons. Which would make our two remaining undefeated teams, the Dogs and the Voodoo. And let's see who has the first tough matchup between the two. Both of them have uh, somewhat easier matchups in Week 7. Um, but in Week 8, the Pythons are going to go in New Orleans. So 
By the logic of just who has the toughest schedule, I'm going to go with the Dogs being the final remaining undefeated team. But overall, that's going to cover it. This is the Delhi Podcast 2.0. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and peace.